Hi, my name is Ivy Starnes and I'm a gated horse trainer in Fort Worth, Texas. Today we are talking about how to retrain the buddy sour and barn sour horse. It's something that many of us have had to deal with at one point or another. A horse that either just wants to turn and go back to the barn, won't stop winning to the other horses, to the extreme such as rearing, running back to the barn, spinning around, and definitely doing things that are very dangerous. And it's something that I have found is very easy to retrain a horse not to be barn sour and buddy sour. And I want to be able to share this with you. So this video, these videos I'm going to show you are from a horse that I worked with this past fall. And she was great if you rode her by the other horses. She was calm and relaxed. And as soon as I headed down the driveway, her attention level kept going higher and higher. I got to the end of our driveway, which is about four... 500 feet, and she started waning to the other horses. Her head was up high. She wouldn't relax. She started doing little rears. They were little, but they were definitely there, definitely not willing to settle down. As I go back to the barn, she's got her head up. She's trying to go fast. She's pushing against the bit. She never ran back, but she was definitely really wanted to go back. Now, here's the kicker. That horse had only been at my house for one day. She was a training horse. She'd never been with that horse before. She was with one other horse and she so wanted to get back to the barn and that other horse even after one day. And I know many of you have horses that were trained or you know that you have horses that are bonded to the horse you have at home and they definitely know where the barn is making this job even harder. And I'm going to show you with this horse how you can do it much easier and train the horse to be calm. So I'm going to show you three of the training days, including the day that it doesn't go well. And by day four, what I saw was that this horse was willing to walk away from the barn and walk back. No calling, willing to stop and eat. That tension that we saw in the first ride was completely gone. And it was a very gentle way of doing it. Now, if you are uncomfortable doing this riding, you can definitely do this process from the ground to start with. And if you're at all unsure, I definitely recommend you try that. Because these same techniques can definitely be used while you're um, leading them. Hi, Alicia from British Columbia. We're going to get started. Before I show you this first clip, one is remember that this complete training session, the four days in its entirety, is available on my private training group. You can join. It's $99, one-time fee, and you're in for life. And the link is in the description. You don't have to. You can always just watch this video. It will be available even after the video ends. The second thing I want to talk about is that before I do the training on the driveway, I rode her in the pasture where she was relaxed and made sure that she was dropping her head and re releasing. If your horse doesn't know how to drop their head and relax, you're probably not ready to do this exercise just yet. Also be aware that this first video is about 14 minutes long, so it's uh, you're going to see the whole thing. I don't cut it up. You're going to see me go down the driveway. You're going to see her slowly get more and more agitated as she gets farther away. We get to the end of the driveway. I want to let her stop and eat, and she doesn't. She's unable to relax. She spins. She won't stand still. She does little rears. She whinnies. And then I head back, and you'll see she's really pulling. She's basically making a nuisance of herself. The typical thing where you see horses running back to the barn, only she didn't run, but if she could have, she would have. And then I show you the process where I begin that same session working to get her relaxed. And then I'll show you day two as well to see the huge difference on day two. And then day four where she walks away and back toward the barn without any of that stress. Also, if this video does help you at all, please share it. This is kind of the biggest way that we can get the word out and have people have a better relationship with their horses. If you find value in this, please share it with others. So let's go ahead and get started. I won't be answering questions uh, live while this next video is rolling, but if you have a question, please comment. And before I play the next video, I will definitely get to it. So this is Reba. She's a Tennessee walking horse. And this is day one. You're going to see her go out the, the driveway and kind of end up not quite ballistic, but definitely not fun. girl. She's definitely looking back at her at the barn and her buddy. So I'm asking her just to walk forward, putting very, very light pressure on the reins to see if I can get her to soften and give her nose. 
I keep her uh, nose pointed away from home. <laughs> I know. To me, this was very expected. She can get a little, there you go, a little buddy sour. We're gonna try to make it a really good ride when we go out. Now, sometimes it doesn't work that way, but my goal is to make it good, let her eat grass. She hasn't had a lot of grass. Um, the pasture she's in, it's eaten down pretty good. So the fresh grass along the side of the road will hopefully be tempting enough to help her be less buddy sour. You can tell she's not paying attention to me because I'm putting light pressure on the reins and she's not really softening and giving her nose. This is very, very common and probably many of you will have to specifically deal with this. This is why you want to ride somewhat by yourself and train this so that your horse listens to you even when they're distracted by their other horses and their buddies. And this can happen anywhere. It could just happen at home. It could happen when you go on a trail ride. You want to spend time getting that softness. She's another horse is whinnying. She can hear it. I'm asking her just to walk forward. Good girl. So I'm going to take her over here in the grass right away and see if she'll eat. This is pretty good grass down here. And a lot of times horses won't eat right away because they want to get back to their buddy. So I'm going to see if I can actually help her before we get more anxious and want to go home more. Okay. Good girl. Like we're doing now. <laughs> yes, you can eat the grass. She just wants to go back. Good. Yeah, eat the grass. So she's putting her nose down to sniff. But if she eats the grass, I'm okay with that. So if your horse is super anxious and won't eat, you probably went too far away from their comfort zone. Yeah, I know. Even though she just met this horse yesterday, <laughs> she's already bonded. A lot of people complain about it. The trick isn't to never let them have a buddy. It's teaching them to pay attention to you. So one of the things I can do is we can just walk in a circle. She doesn't want to stand. And the worst thing you can do is try to make her stand. So we'll walk in a circle. Not with the goal of getting her tired, but trying to get her to soften and relax. <laughs> I know. Oh, yes. So I don't want to take this horse down the road yet because she's buddy sour and anxious and won't pay attention. And it's not a good time to learn. Now, one of the things I can do is decide to walk back and do it again. Go out the driveway, but not go so far. And I may end up doing that. You will always have a time where you're not to pay attention to you and you need to try to yeah not eliminate the distractions but to help them to pay attention to you even when there are distractions because that's how you have a horse that's going to be safe is when they pay attention to you and learn to relax and won't good you want to eat take a breath I keep her turned her head away. Usually if you let, if you make them face where they want to go, that's harder for them. <laughs> so see, if I try to make her stand, like she's doing now, she'll most likely try to rear. So I really encourage people not to make your horse stand. What we're gonna do is we're gonna walk back, we're gonna work on head down all the way back, we're not gonna gate, and we're gonna come back out and stop part way and eat some grass. So you see that high head? She's taking itty bitty tiny steps. She's very anxious. Don't go this far. If your horse gets anxious this far away, you need to not go out so far. And I wanted to show you guys that. There, she's dropping her head so she gets a loose rein. So she's pacey even. I don't want to speed her up. And I want to give her a loose rein. So right there, I gave her a loose rein. She sped up, I slowed her down. Loose rein, slow down, loose rein. You never hold the reins tight, even if they speed up again. Hold, slow down. So you can see this is a horse that's definitely really anxious to get home. Not just a little anxious, but really like, I need to get to her buddy. And this is normal. You need to train horses to not be like this. Not, and the trick is not to just not have a buddy or to never ride alone. It's to train them to be relaxed and calm away from their buddies. So it's all fine and, <coughs> and good to work on the stuff where it's easy, but you want to work on the stuff, good girl. She's putting her head down. Yes. Good girl. We're getting a little bit back to her comfort zone, but she can't speed up. She's not allowed to go fast. Putting the head down is good, but if she tries to speed up, I'll pull as hard as I need to to get her to soften. 
I do not let the horses go fast, but I always release the reins. So I pull harder to slow down and then immediately release. So we're gonna come back in here. We're gonna work on head down. We're not gonna try to like work and make it like tons of work. Like they talk about how it may coming back more work than being out, but I wanna get her paying attention and relaxed. And then we'll try going out again. So again, the goal is not to get her sweaty or worked up. The goal is to get her to relax. And you do that by asking for head down at the walk. Good girl, nicely done. Good, walk on. She also has a hard time going forward. Part of that is probably training. A lot of times horses that are just trail ridden hot, they don't know how to go forward. That, that, that really hotness isn't a, that they trained them to go forward. They just didn't train them to stop. Good head down, very nice. Ooh. And now she has a little bit more ability to stop and stand, but I'm not gonna let her eat in here. We only get to eat when we start to leave our buddies. Good girl. Some people would be like, well, you can just push through that training, but I know that if I take her out to the road and she's that anxious, she's not gonna be in a state of mind to learn. And if my goal is to get the horse to learn, then I need to change something. So we're gonna come right out here and whoa, okay, I'm gonna let her eat. Let that be a good thing, no biggie. It's all good. Good, let her finish eating, keep her head up. Good. So I'm gonna take her over to where there's some more good grass. She has a problem going forward, good girl. Again, it's not so much that, it's mostly that she's just never been taught to go forward. So I'll take her right over here to the grass. Oh, okay, yes. Oh, she's willing to eat here, that's good. That's what we want. Nope, not allowed to go back home. And whoa. We'll... Okay. Good. Good job. Now I want to go a little bit further because this is hardly at all away from the other horse. But I'm going to take her and let her eat more grass so I don't just have her walk out the driveway without, you know, getting a benefit, we're taking her to the good grass. And we'll, okay. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. And we'll. So you see how far I went? That was like 20 feet before I stopped to let her eat again. And again, everybody's like, but I don't want to stop and eat every 20 feet. Well, this is just the beginning. This is not the end training. This is the beginning of the training. And if you want a horse that's not buddy sour, well, just do a little bit of this. It's not going to take very long. You'll see each day how she gets a little bit better. Well, probably will get a little bit better. Okay, right there. Oh, don't eat that. That's a weed. Okay, actually it's a willow tree, so. Or no, I'm not sure what, it's a weed, not sure. Not the dangerous kind. Good. So we're gonna go a little farther. And then we're gonna go back toward home. We're just gonna walk. No rush. She's walking pretty good, that's nice. Loose rain. That's what I want. Good. We're not gonna go all the way back and we're not gonna go eat grass while we're here. We're gonna go down the driveway a little bit and then we'll eat some grass. Good girl. 
getting the brain before the having them get all anxious and energetic is the way I work. Yep, I know you want to go back. So we're going to go right over here to this tall grass. It's right over here. And whoa. Okay. Okay. Yeah, good girl. It's yummy grass right here. Nope, if you're not going to eat, that's fine. Good girl. Oh, right here. Okay. We're not going back. Don't eat that. Okay, fine. Good girl. So she does try to go back. Like she'll turn her head to try to go back. And I basically just keep your reins a little shorter, not tight. Well, and just keep pointing the horse in the direction you want to go. So I'm gonna see if she'll eat here. Okay. Okay. Okay, so she's clearly getting more anxious since she's not putting her head down to eat. But I wanna see if she'll take a little bite and then we'll go back. If not, we'll just, yeah, good girl. So that like she learns that she'll get to eat and sometimes we go back, so we're gonna walk back now. Good girl. Good. Slow down. She's speeding up. So I'm going to slow her down. Good. Slow down. Not allowed to rush back. Nice thing is, she's not as com not super comfortable yet, but she's not getting more anxious. Not whinnying constantly. Again, if we just take her out really far, she's going to be pretty anxious and upset. But the goal is long-term training. Is not for me to be able to work on the gate today, but for tomorrow. Yeah, good girl. She didn't go forward. I just tapped her shoulder. Tomorrow to be able to work on the gate. Oh. Okay. Good girl. Okay. You can eat some grass. Good job standing. Nice job. Good girl. Good girl. And I like when they put their head all the way down because it's helping them calm down. Putting the head down releases endorphins and feel good hormones and chemicals that help them relax and that helps them want to relax more. Good girl, I know, there's some bugs out. As much as, trust me, I want to get this horse gating today, doing this is going to help her long-term ability to be a good horse, as well as give me more ability to work on things like gate as we go. So now we're about where we stopped before. Oh, okay. Yes, good girl. Last time she put her head down right away. Eating quite a few mouthfuls rather than just one. Good girl. Oh. Okay. A lot of times, I think people don't believe that this will actually work. That will actually help a horse to relax and to not be so buddy sour. And well, okay. But it works. So that's pretty much the end of that training session for her for the first day. I head back and she walks. Now I want to point out uh, something that I know some people have asked questions on in the past. If you watch the last of that little video, the last few minutes, you would see that she did want to go forward, right? I'd ask her to stop and stand and offer to let her eat grass and she would ask to go forward. And people might say, well, why not let her go forward? She's doing what you want. Actually, no. I want her to be calm 
and to enjoy being away from the barn, not just to go forward. A lot of people think because trail horses go forward that they're trained to go forward, that they like it, but no, as soon as I would turn to come back to the barn, all that anxiety would come back and it would be a fight to come back. I would rather make her stop and think about it and let her eat so that she enjoys being away from the horses because what you're gonna see is the day two, we're gonna show you in just a minute, I'm gonna show you the progress and I was, Literally, when it was happening, I was blown away with how much calmer she was on day two because I didn't ask her to go as far. So right at the beginning of day one, we got to the end of the driveway and it was too much. It was over threshold for her or outside of her bubble of comfort. And by and the end of day one, I was able to go about halfway down the driveway without her wanting to rush back. And that is part of the problem. I know a lot of people have done some of this training, but they go away. They go like a mile down the road or half a mile. And then as soon as they turn that horse, it's like a rodeo. That horse is off to the races and you have nothing to do but pull as hard as you can to hold the horse back. And that is not the goal. The goal is to get the horse to walk back because you've gotten them comfortable walking out because you've taken that time. So I'll answer some questions here. I know we've got quite a few. So thanks guys for commenting. I love questions. Uh, we have Pamela from West Tennessee and Chrissy from the frigid Northeast Texas. I know, hey, living it too. Julie from Spokane, Washington. Karen from Oregon. Melissa from Louisville, Kentucky. Sue from McMinnville, Tennessee. Uh, Sonia says, feisty mare. Hello from British Columbia. It's snowing there. Well, it is cold here, but not snowing, unfortunately. Lynn says, hi from Tennessee. Uh, Angelina says, hi from Mississippi. Chrissy says, my horse does this when she's not the lead horse on a trail ride or when she gets passed. I don't think it's a buddy issue, which I'd agree, because she goes out alone, no problem. Uh, but the technique is probably the same. I mean, you saw how my horse acted, yeah. So what I would do is slow it down. You have trained her really well to go forward. She walks really well, but she doesn't do all those things when there's a horse in front. So practice either giving her a treat, we know she's food motivated, and stopping, having the horse in front of you stop, and you stop and give a treat while you're behind. And just keep doing that, along with maybe a little bit of leapfrog. I know you've done that, and that's not the issue. Same thing. As the horse is passing her, maybe click and give a treat. Make it a good thing when the horse is in front of her. Maybe you have to stop every five or ten feet and give her a treat when there's a horse in front of her, but it doesn't hurt to try that, and I think you might have some success with that. Uh, Alberta says, hi from Wisconsin, so glad I found your page. Welcome. Uh, Margaret says, hello from Ontario, Canada. Carol says, hi from Michigan. Shanna says, hi from Virginia. Thanks for making the video from the saddle. It's very helpful. It's actually super easy for me to make these videos, and it is helpful for a lot of people, which is cool. Karen says, does having a dog she trusts go along with you help? It's a great question. Well, if you watched the beginning of the video, this horse had just arrived for training the day before, and that's my dog, so she doesn't seem to mind the dog at all in any of the training, but that dog is not a dog she trusts, though I don't discount the fact that having a dog might help. Patty says, another great training video. Hi, Patty. Great to hear from you. Freda says, hi from Montana. I love how you show all the training, not just the finished training. Yeah, because that's part of it. You can't go from the bad horse to the good horse and not see the beat in the middle stuff. Julia has a question. She says, I have a Missouri Fox trotter that I got 18 months ago who is Buddy Sour from the word go. I'm still working on trying to get her comfortable riding away from the barn. We can get about 200 yards away now. Have tried many methods, working her near the herd, or ner working her hard near the other horses, letting her eat away from the barn. Nothing has been a game changer. Great question. So my question is, and feel free to answer it or message me, is when you're doing that and Stay tuned, I got more videos to show you guys. When you are letting her eat away from the barn, is it in this kind of a method where you walk 10 feet away and you let her eat, and then you walk another five or 10 feet and you let her eat, and then you come back to the barn? Things like that, have you done that? And, and have you done the head down training at the walk and faster speeds? Super important that you have done that. Karen says, I noticed that you talked to her while riding, I did the same thing. Uh, the sound of my voice seems to make her calmer. Uh, I do talk to my horses, I don't know how much it helps, but there's usually nothing wrong with it. Margaret says, looking forward to tomorrow's saddle, tomorrow's video on saddle fit. Yep, hopefully, if the horse, there's no horse emergencies, that'll be tomorrow. Claire says, does the horse think they can eat grass anytime? Good question. So I've done this with lots of horses, and I always give them a cue. I stop, and I say, okay. And that's their cue that they can put their head down and eat. When I do this training, uh, you'll see as she goes along, she doesn't constantly put her head down to eat. I've never had a problem, but I also train my horses to go forward and to respond to the bit, so I don't have any trouble. 
Janet says hi from Wisconsin. Diane says hi from Klamath, Klamath, California. This is a great help for my buddy Sour Horse. Uh, thank you so much. You're welcome. Patricia says hi from Maryland. Nicole says, were these sessions every day consecutively or spread out? Uh, basically, each of these sessions you're going to see were almost, I think, every day in a row. There might have been one day in between. Donna says hi from Saskatchewan. Uh, Sarah says, recommending one rain stop training on Buddy Sour. No, I actually don't really recommend the one rain stop very much unless you have a good understanding of how it's supposed to work and you've done lots of prep training ahead of time. Recommendations on pavement walking with no grass away from the barn. Take treats with you. That's my biggest recommendation. Any kind of treats that your horse likes, even if it's just grain, something that they can eat. Chrissy says, I say bite for a grazing cue. Perfect. And then I know Chrissy had another question, but I don't see it. Um, uh, uh, Chrissy, did you delete your question? Somebody else had another really good question, and I'm going back and looking, and I don't see it. Um, Victoria says, I just bought a horse with severe anxiety when other horses aren't around. It's winter. I can only ride in the arena. He's not very food-driven right now. Any other suggestions? So, food is the, usually the primary motivator. So, again, we're talking about thresholds. You're saying, can I take my horse away from his buddies into the arena? And he doesn't want to be there. But can you take your horse partway to the arena and give him some food and take him back? And then take him a little bit closer to the arena and take him back. And then you say not food motivated. Does that mean he won't eat hay? He won't eat oats? He won't eat any kind of grain? He won't eat a treat or an apple? You have to try different things. Most horses, in some ways, are a little food motivated. Not every horse, and there are always exceptions, but also don't get into the arena when he's already anxious. You've pushed past his threshold, past his bubble of comfort, and he's anxious. It's very hard to get them back down from that without a lot of training. Um, Suzanne says, my gelding won't even take 10 steps without doing the four-foot plant refusing. He knows how to go forward and does well with the buddy. He knows head down. Do I circle him? to grass even before we get away from the rail. Uh, yeah, so basically, go, make sure you stop and praise before he plants his feet. And use treats if you don't have grass. I will use a combination. It just works really well for her because she was a little bit anxious. That head down already um, helps. Chrissy says, I already answered it. Oh, good. I'm glad I already answered it. Uh, Betty says, this works well. It's just tough to not get greedy and push them too fast. You are so right, Betty. I'm so glad you mentioned that. That is one of the hardest things is I point out in the video how slow and how far I go, which is very short when I'm, you know, praising for food. And it's so easy to want to get out that driveway, to get to that barn, to get to that next road, you know, that next spot. And you can't just push past all those thresholds. Um, Julia replies, I probably try to accomplish too much at the beginning. Pushed past your threshold, which really set us back. I've restarted and excited to see all the videos and watch the progression. I'm working on head down after watching some of the videos. She's similar to the horse you were riding in this video where she was a walk out trail horse head down. So work in progress for sure. Good. All right. So let me go ahead and play the next video for you. It's a little bit shorter. This is day two, and it's just going to show you the beginning of it, and I'm going to show you how calm she was starting out. And just watch how much I praise her, and hopefully this video will make it a little bit more clear for you guys. We're going to go out a little bit and eat if she wants to eat. Otherwise, we're going to go out and come back. Good. Oh. Okay. Oh, good. She's going to bite. That's good. That's excellent. That's what I want. This is good grass along here. She's definitely not, you know, as calm as Kalua was or other horses I've taken down the driveway. Oh, okay. I know. I know. Okay. You don't have to eat. You don't like that grass? We'll find another spot. Good girl. Oh. Okay. Yes, good girl. The goal is not just to get to the end of the driveway. Oh. The goal is to get to the end of the driveway with a calm horse and be able to come back uh, without running. <laughs> Good girl. So she's chewing. That's excellent. Oh. Okay. 
So now she's looking at something. Oh, oh you want to eat or no? Good. So she's, uh, they have grass and hay to eat. So she's not, you know, starving for food, but she doesn't have grass that's this yummy, which is to the benefit to have what you call high value feed. You know, it's good, good grass. She ha we're not withholding food to make her hungry, but she really wants the good stuff. So she's looking at something. Oh, so right about here is where she stopped being able to eat yesterday. Okay, meaning she was too anxious. Good girl. Okay, you don't have to eat here. Yeah. And wool. We'll... Okay. Yes, good girl. Good job. Nice. Good girl. And wool. We'll... Okay. Good job. She's walking slower, definitely less stressed than yesterday so far. I'll let her stop and smell the poop. Normally I wouldn't, but I want her just to be relaxed and know that she can put her head down. Here's some grass here. Oh, okay. Good. Didn't, got a little bit anxious, didn't want to stay and eat. Oh, oh. okay. Good girl. So I'll give her another opportunity to stop and eat. Good. Nice. Good girl. Nice. And well, this has got some good grass right here. Okay. Yeah, it does. Good girl. Now, one benefit we're having right now that is not giving us trouble is that the other horse isn't whinnying yet. Oh. Okay. If the other horse started whinnying, we might have to get closer. But. She's getting, she's staying pretty relaxed. Oh, there's some good grass right there. Okay. Oh, don't eat that. Okay. Sometimes I think they eat that because it's higher up and they don't have to put their head down. Head down means they have to do a little bit more relaxing. Oh, okay. Good girl. There you go. Good girl. Nice low head. Try to keep out of her mouth. Easy. I know. We're getting very close to the edge of your comfort zone here. Okay. Okay. I know. You're doing so good. I want to try to get across the road and let her eat over there. Even if I have to get off. Good girl. Oh, yeah, you can. That's just a dirt pile. But good girl. I like that she wanted to stop and sniff it that she's looking at things versus just her friend that's gone. Good girl. Try to go across the road and eat. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Good girl. Good. Good girl. Good girl. Easy. Good. So there you go. That was day two. And that ending just uh, cut a little bit. I think there was a car came or whatever. but Or the GoPro stopped working, actually. So I think what happened, it stopped. So you saw that I got to the end of the driveway and immediately came back. I didn't try to stay out there and go down the road because that was only day two. The, let's see... Um, Sarah asks, do, so one more, hang on guys, one more video to show you day four, the last day of training with her. Sarah says, do you do join ups before riding to help reduce anxiety? So I don't personally like the idea of join ups. There's lots of things you can do with your horse that include bonding and are very special and really good, but join ups as they are taught, I'm not a fan of. It is good to do some groundwork to get your horse to trust you. Um, usually I just hop on, make sure they're calm and relaxed ahead of time and then and head out the driveway. And again, I know I mentioned this earlier, but don't bite off more than you can chew. Don't go 
too far. Don't go the next step. Your horse may not be able to make it all the way down the driveway on the second day or the third day if you keep pushing past their comfort thresholds and don't reward enough. If you go back and watch that first day and see how many times I let her stop and eat grass, it's a lot. It's a lot, and that's what you guys need to do. Uh, Vereda says, what makes you decide to go back just when she starts getting a little anxious or before? Well, hopefully, if I'm a good enough reader of the horse, I catch it before she gets anxious and we head back. That would be ideal. That's where you have the most progress because she doesn't keep getting pushed past that threshold and getting anxious and then having to come down. We want to push her right to that limit and then come back down. And she's going to learn to trust us as well because we don't take her too far. Tina says, if there's no grass, can you place hay out in different locations? Excellent point. I've had some people do that. So if there's no grass, you can definitely put hay out there. And I often feed treats from the saddle if there isn't grass. So for example, here in Texas right now, there's only grass in certain spots. So I'll take grain with me that the horse likes, and I will feed that if there isn't grass for them to put their head down and eat. Christine, she says, uh, the owner who let me train her for a little bit, Christine says, Reba's doing great. It's too cold right now, of course. In Illinois, it's, or Wisconsin, it's, yeah, pretty awful. <clears throat> D says, I don't hear any other horse calling for her. I have two mares, and the one left behind is always calling. This is a big issue in trying to overcome the rush to get back to the barn. 